So today we've got a little gap in the middle of the day. We've got no swell, so it's worth coming out just onto the Gurnard Flats. Uh, I'm going to try and film an eat of both a Kawai and a Gurnard. I'm sure I'll at least get the Kawai on camera. First of all, we're already in the bag. I'm running this on a dive reel, it's nice and easy to um, let it out. Let that soak in the water for a little bit until um, some of it starts coming out, then I'll take it out of the little box I've got it in. Right, time to film a bite. So on the way down we immediately have some trevally coming in to look at the camera. There's a couple of half decent ones there but they're not really massive fish, probably around 35 centimeters. these ones. Next up we have a kawai coming into the shop and he doesn't even look at the bait, he looks at the sinker and he bumps it with his nose. This is a very good example of how slow the fishing was on this day. The fish just were not interested in eating. One of those trevally cruisers passed too for a look but he's not interested either. After a couple of fruitless hours of burly pumping and no fish showing up on the underwater camera, I made the call to pull the line in and head somewhere else. I was really struggling on this day. The fish just weren't feeding and I was going to have to make something happen if I wanted to take a few fish home. Okay, we're going to do a full watch through here of this clip now. The hooks get down to the bottom and a snapper immediately gets it into his mouth as soon as I come up tight on the line. And he's already hooked himself in the mouth. Doesn't quite know what's going on. He's going up with the line, he turns away and now he knows he's got the hook in his mouth and he's trying to shake it out. And he's panicking now and then the hook comes out. And his mate's just there underneath him and he notices the hooks and he comes up to investigate and because it's such a slow day and they're not really feeding he's really really taking his time and looking at these baits he doesn't even eat it there he has a real good look at it finally gets a taste of it turns and he's got the circle hook into his mouth you can see here just how delicate the fish are being with their eating habits today no wonder i'm not catching very many fish With that burly working, I managed to hook up to another fish pretty quickly. This time, it's a nice blue cod. This one's just a little bit small, so I throw him back. I threw down a Sanaku and immediately got picked up as soon as it touched down. Something heavy just grabbed it on the way up. Just as I lifted off the bottom. Stopped running. A few good runs in it. Go on, be a John Dory. Ah, big blue cod. That's better. Right, so much better. That is an actually takeable one, is it? A lot of the blue cod around here are just borderline size, around 30 centimeters. So this one was well over at about 37. So I was able to chuck it in the back for some nice fresh fillets. I was finally into a good patch of fish and the hookups just kept coming one after the other. Big head shakes. Terra. Okay. Yes. You're in.
Terra Key's legal size is much smaller than blue cods as they grow much quicker. These ones at around 30 centimeters are perfect to take home for the tape. As usual, after a quick spike, I always make sure to bleed the fish out of the gills. This improves the flesh greatly. What change? Smacking them on the jig now, dropping down and fish are just hitting it when I take a few wines off the bottom. Don't know if this will be a big enough blue cod. It is a blue cod. Fat little one. Yup. Grabbing it as it's going up. It's low wind. Yep, another one got it. Not quite big enough. It's a real fat little fish, just under the lip, eh? Oh, that's a good one. The jig keeps smashing them. I'm just leaving it in the holder now. Might be another, another keeper. Could be something different. Oh, is that a terrakee? <laughs> nice! On a jig. How about that? Hey, that's really good. First one of those I've got on a jig. Can't say I didn't get that on the jig. Old jig. Doing jobs today. Wasn't earlier. I'm running a curly tail skirt on the Sanaku today, and the Tarakihi seem to be loving it. And the the oh, oh bang, Jesus, that's a good hit. Another one to the jig. Just bouncing it down there on the bottom flat falling and it's getting smoked. Lots of head shakes and a bit of running but couldn't tell you what it is because they all feel pretty similar these fish on the reef. Oh, I thought it was a poor eye for a second. Big Terra. Big Terra on the jig. Oh, biggest Terra I've caught for a long time. Especially off the kayak. That's, oh, that's great. That has made my day. Thank you. That is a proper one. And I did have them wrapped around here, so that's why it felt a little weird. Right, well, it's taken a bit today. I didn't think we were going to get a video out of it, but we've made it happen. Moved spots four times. It's not common I've moved that many times. Finally landed on a little bit of reef, and it did look promising at first. It took about an hour for the fish to come on, pumped another pearly hard onto it, and finally got some fish after my last burly ran out. And now we're just picking up fish every now and then, and we've just picked up the biggest terrakee I've caught since coming out here. It's easily the biggest one. And I got it on a jig too. Sunaku with a little bit of fish bite. Does the trick once again. So pretty happy now. I've got plenty of fish on board. I'm gonna stick it out for a little bit more. I don't know where that northerly was because uh, it was meant to pick up to over 10 knots. But it's sort of just a nice settled afternoon after all that wind in the morning. And uh, it's... Uh, turned into a nice little evening fish, which is a bit of a change to the early mornings. That's a lovely fish, that is. Oof. 
jigs are smashing them. Very dark. Jeez, he almost might go. Saw a mark on the bottom as I was packing up. Dropped on it and he saw it dragging along. And he's obviously come flying in and taken it. And it's quite a good fish. If you had a little go at it and then kept following, I think it's a blue cod. Might be lucky to finish off with a flourish. It's got more and more aggressive as the afternoon went on. Not a blue card, a big perch. Well, it's a big boy. Jeez, I've never seen one that big. The size of them. Woohoo! All right, your keeper. Proper sea perch, that one. He's got a fair bit of meat on him. Nice. That's a cool thing to pull up on the jig. Crazy colours. Right, well that was a pleasant afternoon. I was expecting to come in a bit earlier, but that normally never eventuated. It's just calmed off. Probably not even five knots of wind, not capping. We're gonna head into the beach. I'll be back out again later in the week doing a bit more of an offshore trip. I'll get up a bit earlier and go out to a mark that direction. I haven't fished properly. And then uh, after that, we've pretty much explored every close by mark. And I guess we'll keep waiting for that water to warm up a bit because it's still under 14 degrees. So we're all done for today. The plan was to film a gurnard on the underwater camera, but that didn't really work out. We kind of went bust on the sand completely, and there was just no fish feeding. I had fish on the screen, but nothing just wanted to feed at all. So later into the afternoon, after about four hours of nothing, I headed out to one of my usual spots and found a few fish out there. First one we got, got a nice blue cod. Pretty good sized fish on, on a jig. First fish to come aboard was a snapper. Can assure you it's legal. I only took it because I was having a tough day. And a few terrake and some pretty solid ones as well. Some really nice fish overall. Pretty good. He's letting his ear go. So, pretty happy uh, with how it went in the end. Even snagged a tasty sea perch. Pretty cool looking fish too. So, I'm gonna do a couple of filleting videos. Haven't done a blue cod, terrakee, or a sea perch video, so that's gonna be it for today. We're gonna to be out a couple more times this week, hopefully, if the weather holds together. It was much better than expected today, so yeah, hope you all enjoyed the video, and um, we'll see what comes of that footage from the underwater camera because I haven't actually checked it yet. I've got a lovely tarakihi here that I've caught today while fishing and I'm going to show you how to fillet it. So tarakihi are pretty simple to fillet overall. They're much like a snapper in body structure. The first cut is going to be down near the pectoral fin. Get it right down in there and then lighten up the knife as you come over the belly because I don't want to pierce that gut cavity. Now I turn the fish around and then I begin going down the backbone and follow that line of bones down as you go. Now when I get to the bottom here, I'll be able to feel with the tip of the knife where the backbone is. I'm gonna go over that, then go back down and pop out the other side. And I'm gonna grab the fish with the other hand and I'm going to work the knife down towards the tail and I've got the whole fillet now started. 
So then what I'll do is I'll open the top of the fillet and run the knife down the backbone, making sure to stay really close to it. We want to get all that fish off while they're eating. Now what I'm doing here is I'm going over the pin bones and going down the bottom side of the spine. Now you want to break those pin bones without going too deep so you don't pierce the gut cavity. And keep working the knife down, he'll eventually get to the bottom and just work it slowly along there and you'll have your fillet off. Some lovely terrakee. Push down on an angle and then flatten your knife as you go. Grab that tail piece and then slowly go backwards and forwards. Hold on to that back end and pull the fillet down as you work the knife up. And there we go, we've gone through it. Now I want to keep it on that skin for when I do the pin bones because I don't want it to get any of that slime on it because it won't keep as well. So down the middle, the pin bones, we do our best to minimize any waste and there we go. That's all that I'm wasting. Here's your fillet. Pretty nice. Good is it? So, caught this nice blue cod and we're going to fillet it. What I'm going to do is make a cut next to the pectoral fin, making sure not to go too deep. I don't want to hit that belly. Going to lighten the knife up down the bottom. We're going to try and go over the top of it. Now I'm going to turn the fish around and get the knife in and work my way down that backbone now, all the way along and then at the bottom push my way through on the other side of the backbone and come out at the tail now, get those scales off your knife and get your knife back in at the top start working the knife down that backbone Now this is the pin bones up here. I'm going to press down hard and break them. Break them again and it's coming away beautifully now. Missed a little bit of meat there. That, that's okay. Down the bottom. It's coming away nicely now. And we'll just do a cut down the bottom. We did pierce it slightly but nothing's gone on the fillet. And there it is, that's the first one. I'm going to change knife for this one to a shorter blade. We'll get one of our fillets up. Now what I do for blue cod is I press my finger really hard down on the base of the tail and then lightly put the knife down until I feel the skin. Now I'm going to roll that knife as I go, holding on to the back end of the fillet and I'm just going to work my way up, pressing hard down on the skin. It's pretty hard to break through this skin because it's quite thick. And I'm rolling the fillet and pushing the knife up as I go, pulling from the opposite direction. Now blue cod actually have one of the longest pin bones in the common fish that I catch. So it's actually quite a significant bit in the middle that you, um, you take out, just because of how long it is. Doesn't seem to want to uh, be in shot for you, but I've got it there now. Right, we're going to do our best to keep as much of that there as possible. It just wants to slide, doesn't it? Alright. Oh, it's coming away now. There you go. Finished fillet. We do have the ribs still in, but I like eating those, so just to eat round them shouldn't be a problem. Look on that side, a little bit of skin left, but otherwise nothing wrong with it. Should be a good dinner.